Good day everyone, I'm Angel Tai. Today my presentation topic is The Psychological Effects of Long COVID and Benefits of Probiotics. COVID-19 is caused by SARS-CoV-2 which led to a global pandemic that started since the end of 2019. Although the pathogenesis, clinical characteristics, epidemiology and complications of the acute phase COVID-19 have been explained, but the long-term consequences remain unclear. Along with the increase in cases of COVID-19, recognition of the mental health consequences of infection has also increased. This is consistent with previous SARS and MERS outbreaks that were associated with long-term neuropsychiatric implications. SARS-CoV-2 has a 79% overlap of genomic sequence identity with SARS-CoV-1 and 50% with MERS-CoV. Both SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2 use ACE2 as the host cell receptor but with SARS-CoV-2 having a greater affinity for ACE2. Given the similarities, it is possible that the current COVID-19 pandemic could have a similar trend as to the past SARS and MERS outbreaks. Here, we will focus on anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder post-COVID-19. COVID-19-related psychiatric disorders are likely multifactorial due to a combination of environmental, psychosocial and biological factors resulting from this global pandemic. There is a growing body of literature around the psychological symptoms in the aftermath of COVID-19 infection, but results are from studies based on surveys and self-reported questionnaires. Psychological manifestations could be related to those virus-infected individuals worried about the stigma, outcome of illness, traumatic memories of severe illness or amnesia, the psychological reactions after contracting COVID-19 and the associated medical interventions. However, it could also affect both infected and uninfected individuals due to experiences related to the pandemic, including social isolation, anxiety, financial difficulties and unemployment, and stress in both essential workers and healthcare workers. Prospective studies have shown that symptoms of long COVID-19 can persist up to 12 months post-hospitalization. An Ethiopian study carried out amid the COVID-19 pandemic also found that among chronic medical patients, the prevalence rate of anxiety and depression was higher than the prevalence rate before the COVID-19 pandemic. Study from China showed hospitalized clinically stable COVID-19 patients reported higher rates of PTSD, depression and anxiety than normal controls. In contrast, another study in China showed that the prevalence rates of clinically significant depression, anxiety, and PTSD symptoms for hospital discharge COVID-19 patients are 19%, 10.4%, and 12.4% respectively. Although there is a huge difference between studies, these anxiety and depression rates are much higher than the rates found in the normal general adult population in China. Another study from China showed that at 6 months post-discharge, 23% of patients experience anxiety or depression. Findings from this Chinese study were somewhat similar to findings from a Korean study, where long-term psychological sequelae were identified and made up same as and more than 20% of all sequelae. A study showed that 41.3% of patients in Iran and a third of COVID-19 patients in Italy experienced anxiety and depression post-discharge. Also, based on data from 54 healthcare organizations in the United States involving COVID-19 survivors, the incidence of first and recurrent psychiatric illness between 14 to 90 days post-diagnosis is 18.1%. There appears to be a slight variation in the risk factor profile for the different psychiatric manifestations associated with COVID-19. Below are some of the listed risk factors for the respective illnesses. Risk factor of being female and having a history of psychiatric illness is found to be consistent across a range of neuropsychiatric complications. Studies found females having a history of psychiatric diagnosis and those with psychopathological symptoms a month post-discharge suffered more in all psychopathological domains. Overall, female gender tends to be a consistent risk factor for various psychological disorders, with several studies showing females post-COVID-19 have a 2.2 to 2.5 times higher chance of developing a psychiatric morbidity. This finding is consistent with SARS studies, where female SARS survivors were also at a higher risk of depression, anxiety, and stress levels. Interestingly, another study even found females were more represented than males among dead COVID-19 patients with a common mental disorder. 
Mechanisms that contribute to COVID-19's neuropathology involve a variable combination of direct viral infection, neuroinflammation, severe systemic inflammation, neurodegeneration, and microvascular thrombosis. Coronaviruses can damage the nervous system by the direct invasion of the CNS, in which the virus can enter via the blood circulation pathway, neuronal pathway, and by binding to ACE2 receptors. A study by Wu et al. suggested that the SARS-CoV-2 virus enters the brain directly as its spike protein binds to ACE2 receptors in capillaries, disrupting the blood-brain barrier. As they cross the blood-brain barrier, there will be increased binding to high-density ACE2 receptors present on neurons. In recovered COVID-19 patients, SARS-CoV-2 can lie latent in the neurons, resulting in demyelination and neurodegeneration, causing greater risk of long-term effects. Cytokine dysregulation are known to be associated with psychiatric disorders and have been shown to be elevated in patients with COVID-19. SARS-CoV-2 binds directly to ACE2 receptors in the respiratory epithelial cells, potentially resulting in a cytokine storm that causes widespread inflammation. Even without direct viral infiltration into the CNS, the involvement of peripheral cytokines in the host antiviral response could cause neuroinflammatory responses and or compromise the blood-brain interface integrity, resulting in peripheral immune cell transmigration into the CNS and the disruption of neurotransmission, possibly inducing psychiatric symptoms. Biotics are one of the potential adjunctive treatments for psychiatric sequelae among COVID-19 survivors other than the conventional use of psychotropic medications. Probiotics can stimulate and modulate the immune system as well as reduce inflammation. They have anti-inflammatory, antipathogenic, and antimicrobial properties, which aids the restoration and maintenance of intestinal homeostasis and microbial balance. They mediate its anti-inflammatory effects by modulating pro-inflammatory cytokines, regulating EDO activity, and restoring intestinal barrier function. A recent meta-analysis revealed that probiotic intervention can significantly reduce the expression of EDO, an important enzyme which metabolizes tryptophan to kynurenine, in the immune cells and plasma of patients across several clinical trials. Kynurenin and its metabolites play important roles in mediating inflammatory effects relevant to mood, anxiety, and psychotic disorders. With that being said, probiotics can modulate the kynurenin pathway, where the activation of EDO in response to inflammatory stimuli can be inhibited. Hence, reducing inflammation-induced CNS pathology. Probiotics and their metabolites, such as short-chain fatty acids, possess excellent potential in maintaining the integrity of the gut barrier by regulating the tight junctions between cells, limiting the translocation of gut bacteria across the intestinal barrier, and reducing the activation of gut-associated immune cells. Thus, probiotics and short-chain fatty acid supplementation could potentially confer protection towards SARS-CoV-2 entry and trigger immunological changes in the gut. Short-chain fatty acids also maintain the blood-brain barrier's integrity by enhancing the expression of tight junction proteins. Neurotransmitters such as serotonin and gamma-aminobutyric acid are also metabolites produced by intestinal microbiota and probiotics. These neurotransmitters play major roles in orchestrating the normal functioning of the brain, as imbalances in these neurotransmitters trigger stress, anxiety, depression, and impaired cognition. COVID-19's mental health consequences have been shown to continue even after hospital discharge. The exact cause of these psychological effects is yet to be determined as it could be the direct action of the coronavirus on the brain and CNS or indirect effects via systemic inflammatory responses to the virus or a result of psychological stresses. The consistent risk factors for psychiatric manifestations seem to be the female gender and history of psychiatric disorders. Early interventions are crucial to combat the rising psychiatric manifestation of COVID-19 and to improve the functioning and quality of life of those affected, as well as to reduce the chances of developing neurocognitive impairments in addition to the already debilitating psychiatric manifestations. Standard screening tools should be implemented to identify depression, anxiety, and PTSD-affected individuals. There should be neuropsychological evaluations for post-COVID-19 patients. Close interdisciplinary collaboration between health experts and specialized post-COVID-19 rehabilitation centers should be made available to better manage post-COVID-19 syndromes. 
last but not least, rather than using conventional psychotropic medications alone, probiotics could be a safe adjunctive treatment for elevating psychiatric sequelae in post-COVID-19 survivors. These are my references. Thank you for the kind attention. Also, I would like to thank the organizing committee for providing me the opportunity to take part in this prestigious event. Thank you very much.